two. Not from the last one. From uh, one to one lesson. Mm -hmm. So I got well, if it's one to many or many to one. And uh, it's quadratic. Mm -hmm. uh, two L square minus four L. Oh, you remember it. Okay. Well, let me open it up. Come on in. Just me and Mushari wondering when someone will arrive. We're doing a yeah. I might have to go around. Oh, you're sitting down, yeah. Um, we're doing a couple of questions Mushari has from the last worksheet. So which number is it? Uh, 2x2. But which number is it? Is it this one? No, no. I don't want to the last one. I mean, from one to one, or many to one. Say if it's one to one, I mean... Oh, that one, sorry, yeah. Types of mapping. Yeah. Let's have a look at that one. And what number is that one? M. Number two? Ah, uh, yeah. Come on, open. Um, 9x minus, oh that one. Mm, no, no, no. Uh, B, B. B? Square minus 4x Okay. 2x squared minus 4x minus 2. And you have to state if it's 1 to 1 or many to 1. Yeah. You say it's equal to x squared 1 minus 1. We'll check it. We can check it, yeah. I, this is how I would do it. I would first say x1 does not equal x2. And we're trying to find when fx1 equals fx2. 2x1 squared minus 4x1 minus 2 equals 2x2 squared minus 4x2 minus 2 this one's a bit tricky but what I can do is I can cancel minus 2 on both sides can you see that yeah so there you go I can divide everything by 2 as well so I'm left with x1 squared minus 2x1 equals 2x2 oh no, x2 squared minus 2x2 like that yeah which is x1 times x1 minus 2 equals x2 times x2 minus 2 so what should happen here if I say let x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 2 x1 and x2 are different but this side, what would this equal? Uh, this, if it's 0 for x1, it would be 0 and here, if uh, uh, x2 is 2, this would be 0 so it looks like f of 0 and f of 2 should make the same number so f of 0, if I put 0 in here, I get minus 2 and if I put 2 in here, you can see I get 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 8 is 0, mm -hmm. minus 2. So you have found two numbers which are different but produce the same value in the function. So what you've done is you've shown that 0 and minus 2 both go to minus 2. So this is definitely not 1 to 1, it's the other one, uh, many. to one. Yeah. And also from the range. The range, yeah. Let me just open that one. I I have it. Ah yeah, but I'd like to look at them too, if you don't mind.
Okay, which question? Minus 2x cubed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x plus 6. And um, we want to know what's the range. So, same trick. y equals minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x plus 6. So we get 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x minus 6 minus y equals 0. Yeah. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to solve this, or rather we're trying to find the y that makes this solvable. Now, the thing is, cubics are always solvable. There's always a root with a cubic, because the shape of the cubic, it doesn't matter how I draw the cubic, one part goes up and the other part goes down. So it means it will always cross the x-axis. So this one is always solvable, no matter what it is. So that means the y could be anything. Okay. Yeah. So the range is all the real numbers. And this makes the function onto, because it uses everything. That the codomain and the range here equal, yeah. So that was actually a bit of a trick question, a little bit. Yeah. It's okay? We're good now? Okay. Um, I think our next lesson is um, inverse on Moodle. Uh, yeah, because I think sure, I think that's the last lesson in this chapter, isn't it? Mm. Oh no, there's still modulus, which is the last one. Oh no, and then transform. Okay, so there's still a few left in this chapter. Okay, we're gonna have a look at inverse now. Okay, to get started I'm going to give you um, yeah I know what I'll give you. Okay, um, we've done function composition so here's a function for you. Um, it's a simple function. 3x minus 2. Okay? And I'll give you another function, I'll call it gx, and um, I'll call that one mx plus c, and you don't know the m and the c. And I want, I want you to try and do for me, I want you to try and find a function, so, uh, the m and the c, so that when f is composed with g, the two of them kind of cancel, and you're only left with x as the function. So in other words, I need you to figure out the m and the c so that when you put this function with this, you should only be left with x in the end. So I'll give you a little hint to start. You just do it like normal. So you take the g function, which is mx plus c, you put it into the f function, and then you think about what do I make the m and the c so that this here will equal x. So it's not too bad. Let's see what you can come up with.
How are we doing? Do we have an M and a C? Part more positive? Yeah. Sounds believable. Let's see what we get. Um, one power button is pressed. Suspend. Suspend. They could be, that's what Eard e got. Um, what do you do with Is that what you got? Oh, well, let's see what we get. So if we put um, G in, G is MX plus C, and that's supposed to equal X, and we put that into F, so that would be 3 mx plus c minus 2 equals x. So that's 3mx plus 3c minus 2 equals x. Um, so that's 3m bracket x plus 3c minus 2. That should equal x then. So this one, yeah, it's not, um, you were close, but not quite there. We want to make these two the same. So if you look here, we only have a 1x. So that means this piece here must be 1. So that means 3m must be 1. So that means m must be 1 over 3 then. So that gives us the m. And then when we look here, what do we want this piece to be? What do you think? Yeah. yeah, you want it to be zero because you don't have anything else. So that means C should equal 2 over 3. So if you have the function GX equals 1 third X plus 2 thirds, then when you put F with G together, what do you get? X. So for example, FG1 should equal 1. Let's test that. Or let's actually pick an easier number. Let's say 3. Okay. That should equal 3. So let's put 3 into G. 1 over 3 times 3? Yeah. Try again. 1 over 3 times 3? One. 1. 1 plus 2 over 3. Um, 5 over 3, isn't it? Now let's put 5 over 3 into F. 5 over 3 Five. times Three is five minus two. Five minus two. Three. So it works. G has a special name. G is called the inverse of F because it cancels what the F did. Do you know what I mean when I say like undo? Yeah. So it undoes what the F did. So. An inverse function, so this is like the definition, f minus 1 is the inverse of f if f, f inverse or f inverse f both cancel to just make x. So that's what makes it the inverse function. In fact, you kind of know some of these already. Like, for example, if I said fx equals an ex, then what function cancels and leaves you with just x? Well, it's log x, yeah. So this is called the inverse of this one. So you kind of have done something like this before, uh, but we're looking at it more formally now. So this is the definition. Um, you might want to write this down. And here is a very simple example you should be familiar with. So e log x equals log e x, which equals x.
Yeah? You got the concept, the idea? So what we want to do now is how do we find the inverse function and can we always find an inverse function? It probably had two hours a day. Is it only one hour? No. Two hours now of maths. Yeah. And one hour, uh, sorry, I meant to say two hours of physics. Oh, no, tomorrow. That's tomorrow we were talking about. Okay, yeah. So it's only this morning that we have classes. So, okay. And it's looking like it'll just be the two of you. I know Mir's having trouble with his wisdom teeth. And Adnan? Um. Adnan's at the pharmacy? He's sick as well? He's at the pharmacy anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, can we continue down? Yep. So you've seen what inverses functions are like. Can we always find an inverse? So have a look at this example. Tell me what you think. If I say fx equals x squared, can you think of an inverse function for this? Something that undoes. Undoes? Undoes? Undoes. Undoes? Yeah, sounds weird though. Undoes the x squared. Yeah, or in other words, same thing, square root x, x to the power of half. Now, that's what we feel like the answer is, but it's not quite, doesn't quite work as nicely here. For example, let's say I start off with the number 2 in the domain, and I use fx. What would I end up with if I put 2 into fx? Four. So, when I use the inverse function, I should go back to 2. And you're thinking, what well, I do? Because square root of 4 is 2. But what about if I had something like minus 2? Yeah, so if I have <coughs> minus 2, that also goes to 4. But now my function will take me back to 2 not minus 2. In other words, I lose the sign. I don't know if the original was plus or minus. So f and f inverse, um, we don't know what the sign is anymore. It loses the sign on the x. In other words, we can't always have an inverse function, even though sometimes we feel like we can. You can only have an inverse function when you can get back to the start, exactly the x. Here, we can get back to 2, but we can never get back to minus 2. In other words, we can never know if we were coming from plus or minus 2. So we can't really undo it. So what do we need for a function to have an uh, inverse? We only need the function to have two things. f has uh, an inverse, f minus 1. If and only if. Really? Okay. Uh, f has an inverse if and only if f is um, 1 to 1 and f is on 2. Now, in fact, um, when these two things happen and f does have an inverse, the word we use in English is we say f is. But does anyone actually want to try and have a go at the English here? F, oh goodness, F is, what might be the adjective to describe F if it has an inverse? Invertible. No, go on, yes, say it again. Invertible. Correct. Invertible. Why is this not really black? It's kind of like grey. In, uh, vertible. Now, I'm not sure if I have an I here. I think so, but I'm not 100% sure. Why have I got black? Uh, invertible. It has an inverse. So if it's 1 to 1 and on to, it has an inverse. It's invertible. Um, and there's another word which... It's because I'm in some weird pen mode. If it's 1 to 1 and uh, invertible, we can use one word to describe if it's both. We call that bijective. So if I ever say bijective, I'm just being 
short, I mean one to one and onto. So in other words, you can say F is invertible if and only if F is bijective. So why is x squared not invertible? Well, it's not bijective because it's not one to one because in fact it's many to one. So we've done a lot of theory. Now we need to learn how to find the inverse. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so tired. How much hour did you do? Not too too bad. I went to bed at one o'clock and got up at seven o'clock. So that's six hours. Same. But I was so busy yesterday. Yesterday evening. Ah, okay. You got four classes this morning? Um. You don't want to know. That's okay. Alright, so now let's have a look at how to find the inverse. So we'll start with a simple example like the one we did earlier. fx equals 2x plus 3. Now there's two ways to find the inverse, so I'll show you both ways and you decide which one you like in the exam. This first way I saw in a book actually a couple of years ago and I thought it was kind of a nice way to do it. So what you do is you start off with x and you say, okay, I want to do all the things that f does. So if I was trying to calculate f of x, what's the first thing I would do? first thing I would do is I take my x and multiply it by 2 and that would give me 2x then what's the next thing I would do? add 3 so then I'd have 2x plus 3 is that the same one I gave you earlier? no I want to keep it the same I gave you 3x plus 2 oh, I better keep it the same then so you can see I get the same answer 3x minus 2. So then this one here will be 3x and then this one here will be minus 2. Yeah. yeah. 3x oh yeah, three minus 2. That's the x. The inverse, what you do is you start here and you do everything backwards. So this one was multiply 3 and this one here was then minus 2 on the answer. So what would be the opposite of uh, minus and 2? Plus 2. Plus two. And then what's the opposite of multiplying by 3? Dividing. Dividing by 3. So you'd end up with um, x plus 2 over 3. In other words, the inverse function would be 1 over 3x plus 2 over 3. Same answer that we got. That's one method. I'll call that one method 1. That's a, that's a fine method. It's pretty quick method. Uh, as long as you're careful, you know, it's a nice method. There's another method which more students use, uh, more common in the exam. So just write this method down, or do you have it? No. And I'll show you the second method. So what do you think about this method? It's understandable. Have you seen anything like this before? No. 
Uh, actually, have you studied this before? Inverse of functions? Or no, no. You think you have? Have you seen this method? Are you sure? I was in school of math. You were in school of math? Yeah. Studying math? Math. So you are a mathematician? No. Okay. <laughs> How long did you study maths for? Forty. So you're a mathematician? No. No? Because I didn't only put me. School of math, so. Um, so why did you change into physics? Uh, because of my first choice. Ah, okay. Maths is your second choice? Yeah. Yes, okay, okay. Remind me, what engineering do you want to do next year? Uh, mechanical. Mechanical. Do you know where? The DRT. DRT. And you're. Is it electrical? Yeah, in Galway? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, 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 good. This should be the same grade, is it? Or maybe even... Yeah. No, about the same, isn't it? Smidge less, maybe. Right? That sounds about right. Two B's and a C. And a B and two C. Also, smidge less only. Does it care which way the B's and C's go? Nah. Has to be the B. Fair enough, I suppose. C, physics, C, chemistry? Yeah. That should be okay, shouldn't it? Yeah. Um, but what about the B in maths now? That's probably the one, the toughest one, is it? Yeah, okay. And for you, two Bs and a C? The C B in chemistry, physics? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, the B, the B in the math is probably the, the toughest one. Um, and what about the EAP? That's no problem for you. What do they need? Uh, so you've got you probably have a C already from your continuous assessment. And what do they need? C. C? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, right, let's have a look at the second method. Yeah, from Fuam had her first class yesterday with the new physics students. So she's in a much bigger class because there's like 10 of them in there. So she's, she, uh, She'll need a couple of days to get to know their names. Okay, method two. I'm going to use the same question so you can see it's the same answer. Uh, what was it? 3x minus 2, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, in this method, what you need to do is you first say let y equal to the function. So you change it into y equals 3x minus 2. So this kind of reminds you of what method you've seen recently. Isn't it kind of like finding the range? Yeah. Except this time, what you do is you solve for x. So this is y plus 2 equals 3x. So then that's y plus 2 over 3 equals x. And then the last step is you swap x and y. So this becomes x plus 2 over 3. And then you, uh, you change um, to inverse. So in other words, I'm sorry, I'm not being very clear. You replace the y with the x here in the answer. And then that is your answer for the inverse function which you can see is the same answer. Yeah. So, uh, there's still one other question I want to show you, but before showing you that, I'm going to give you a function, and I want you to use both methods to get the inverse to see that you get the same answer. Can I scroll down? Uh, what about just the here? Yeah, okay. Find f inverse if f is equal to e 2x plus 1. That's a bit tricky. See what you can do.
Okay, how are we doing here? Do we have answers? Or is it a little too hard? Only by the first message? By the second. You can by the second, not by the first. You yeah, guys, what's the story over here? Mm -hmm. Maybe I gave you too hard of a one to start with. Um, Okay, so we have a look at it, the first method. So, I start with X, yeah? Now, what do I do first to my X? I multiply by 2 first, so that gives me 2X. Then what do I do? I add 1, and that gives me 2X plus 1. And then what do I do? I E the answer, so that gives me E2x plus 1. So going backwards, starting with x, what's the opposite of taking E? Log, yep, very good. So that brings me to log x. What's the opposite of adding 1? Minus 1, so it gives me log x minus 1. And then lastly, the opposite of multiplying by 2 Dividing by 2, yeah. Oops, sorry, it's a bit messy. Uh, so that's log x minus 1 over 2. So the inverse function, if you want, you can write it as a half log x minus a half, or you can leave it as a fraction. That's perfectly fine in the exam. Log x minus 1 over 2. Uh, sorry, Mr. Sharif, you said this way was good or no good? No oh good. So you like the other method. Uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Uh, does the order make a difference in that value? Mm, it does, yeah, it does, yeah. So um, the way I think about it is if you were imagine imagine that there was a number here, what steps would you go to on, on the calculator? Now, I know it's a bit different nowadays, because nowadays, on the calculator, you can type this all in in one step. Uh, for me, or maybe for you too, my calculators, you have to do it step by step. You couldn't type it all at once. So, for me, um, I would be used to, well, okay, first I have to multiply it by 2 to get this number. Then I have to add 1 to my answer to get this number. Then I have to take E of my answer to get this. I couldn't put it all on one line on the calculator. So maybe it's easier for me this way because that's kind of what I've been, or what I was used to. Um, so yeah, the order does matter. Um, let's have a look at the second method. Okay, so the second method, we have y equals e2x plus 1. So um, what should I do first if I'm trying to get the x? Log y, yeah. So I get log y equals 2x plus 1, because if I put a log here and here, they cancel. Yeah. Uh, what's next? Log y minus 1 equals 2x. And finally, over 2, take this and replace x with y. Log x minus 1 over 2, that's the inverse. Same answer as previously. You could actually test it out if you wanted to. If you wanted to, you could check that this does equal x and that this does equal x. But I mean, we don't need to do that. It is the inverse. Yeah? Okay, one more thing to show you. Can I scroll down? Yeah. yeah. Earlier, we said this function, 
f real numbers to real numbers x to x squared is not uh, invertible. And why is it not invertible? Yeah, what's the word? Um, it has to be, if it's invertible, it has to be bijective. And why is it not bijective? Yeah, yeah. But, in some cases, you can make a function invertible. Here, uh, we use a method where we restrict f. f. So, for example, here, It's not invertible because it's not bijective. It's not bijective because it's many to one. And the reason it's many to one is because x of squared of a positive is the same answer as x squared of a negative. So if you tell the person, okay, only use positive numbers and only look for positive numbers in your answer. By changing the domain and the codomain to only positives, now it is invertible because f inverse of x equals root x will give you a positive number and you know that's the right answer because at the very beginning you tell the person only use positive numbers for f. So in other words we can restrict the domain to the positives instead of all the numbers. Now we've made it invertible because now we've made it bijective. Now that's a simple example, but it gives you the basic idea. We'll look at one more example that's a bit more difficult, uh, a cubic, but this is just the general idea. So the question would have been, um, I'll write the question here if you want to write it on the top. Um, here's the function, and the question would have been restrict, or in other words would be choose a domain of f so that f is invertible. So here the answer is uh, use only the positive real numbers if you want to write it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can I scroll that? Okay. So let's have a look at a cubic one now. And um, before I write it down, let's just say fx is cubic. Yeah. Is this invertible? Yeah, is it one to one though? What do you think? Now you might need to think of the graph and think about the horizontal and vertical lines if you remember that from it. It's not. What is it actually? Yeah, because true vertical lines only intersect uh, once, but some horizontal lines intersect more than once, meaning it's not um, what we want. But we could make it um, one to one if we restrict the domain. So if we don't use all of the x-axis, the real axis, if we only use part of it, um, we could make it one to one. So if you look at my graph, maybe someone could tell me, what could I restrict the domain to? And I'll put in some numbers so you can reference them for me. So let's just, for example, say that's one, and let's say that's two, and say that's 3 and that's 4 and let's say that's 5 and I, well that of course that's 0 there. What do you think? Uh, horizontally. What could I use for the range, uh, the domain? From 1 to the other. From 1? Yep. Yeah. You could actually make it a bit bigger than that. 
that would work, but let's try and make it as big as possible. Bigger than 1 to minus infinity, you could squeeze a bit more out. Yeah, well, I was thinking we could go 2 to minus infinity, because if we only use this part, if I draw a horizontal line, it meets it only once. But actually, we could make it even bigger than this. What do you think? Uh, horizontally only once. Remember, I'm stopping here. Because I'm only going to here. What else? I could actually make it a bit bigger. I could also go from um, 5 to infinity. In other words, I'm not including 5 because 5 is the same height as uh, 2 in my picture. So in other words, what I can just do in this example is I can just cut this out. I could just say minus infinity to 2 and then 5 to infinity. Because when I draw horizontal lines now, it'll meet only once. Because even when I draw it here, it meets it only once because I've cut this part out because I can't use this values of x. So it meets it here. And if I go a little bit uh, lower as well, again, it only meets here because this part, it's like it's been cut out because I'm not using this part of the x-axis. So I have a, an example here. So if I said choose the domain, what would you need to do? Well, unfortunately, you would need to draw it. But you don't need to. You don't really care about the roots. What points do you actually care about? The turning points. Yeah. So I'll draw this. We'll just make a rough sketch. But if you were doing this, oops, oh my goodness, I'm making it worse. Uh, no. Uh, okay, yeah, that'll do. If you were doing this and you drew the sketch, you would need to find the turning point, which is very easy to do. Um, I'll just do it here. How do you find the, how do you find the turning points here? Get the derivative. Yeah, the derivative of this. What is it? Six x squared minus eighteen x plus twelve, and then what do you do with this? Equals zero, and you solve it. That's easy. You could use the quadratic formula, and you get two answers. You get one and two, which you can kind of see on my graph is one and two. So, what could you say the domain is? Uh, 1 and 2. We, yeah, 1 would be here, and 2 would be here. So I think you can go a bit bigger than that. You said minus infinity to 0, but I think you could go as far as minus infinity to 1. That would get you up to here. You don't want this piece. You would have to continue it from... Oh, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Um, not 2, because you kind of want it around about here, or 3. Um, but there's actually many answers... If you want to just say minus infinity to 1, that's fine. Um, you don't have to give the biggest answer. It depends what the question says. And in fact, if you think about it, there's other answers as well. Let me just zoom in here to explain. So you could have gone with minus infinity to 1, like you said, or minus infinity to 1 and then something like 3 to infinity. Or you could have gone with... 1 to 2. Only use this part of the graph because that would only meet once and then cut the other tails off. Do you get what I'm saying? You actually have many options. Like remember earlier when I said to only use positive? You could have said only use negative. You could have said um, yeah, you could have said f of x equals x squared but use the domain of minus infinity to zero, and then the inverse function 
would be minus root x. So for example, if I'm only using negative numbers, what's f of 2? That would be 4. And then f inverse of 4 by this formula would be minus 2, which is what you wanted to go back to. So these answers, there's more than one of them. It's just, you know, it doesn't really matter. You just need to find some domain that makes it invertible. So the reason I'm drawing this is to show you that often it's the turning points that cause the problem because when the function turns and goes back down, that's the reason why it crosses twice. Yeah. Now if you look at what you have to do, the first question is which ones are invertible? So that's actually just me trying to ask you which ones are one to one. So for example, is the first one invertible? It is, because is it one to one? It is, yeah. The second one, is it invertible? No, because it's quadratic, so it's not. You know, same thing as last time. Number two is what I was just doing. You can make these one-to-one -one by choosing a suitable domain. In each case, state the domain. So, for example, here, well, you can kind of see the answer already. You maybe just use the positive x's, for example. Um, unfortunately for some of these, and in fact really all of them, you're going to need to draw the graph. You know how to do graphs of quadratics, you know how to do graphs of sine and cos, and you, if you forgot, you can look at the lesson solving and sketching cubics for how to do graphs of cubics, but really these are graph questions. Okay. The last one is what we did at the start, which is um, the two methods for finding the inverse. I should tell you that this is the most important question because this is the one that they ask on the exam I think all the time. I think every exam I've seen or nearly every exam has one of these questions. Um, I haven't really seen this. I think I've only seen this like once. And I think I've only seen this one like once on the exam. It's this one that they'd love to ask in the exam, finding the inverse of a function. And they don't care which method you use. but I think most students use the solving for x method rather than the step method. Uh, and then 4 and 5 are tricky ones I just put in at the end there, keep you entertained. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just let you, it'd be nice if you could try one from each before we go on to the next lesson on Moodle. Uh, even, even just like um, number B from each now, like 1B, 2B and uh, 3B. If you could do those now, that would be great, and then we can go on to the next lesson. Um, you might... Yeah, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. I think that's bad grammar. I should have said state which the following are invertible, but is invertible. Depends what's inside of them. They usually are, yeah, yeah. but if there's a quadratic inside, yeah. it's not. Yeah.
You were wondering yesterday, Iyad, how many would be left in physics. Looks like we're at two at the moment. Do you need help, Mr. Which one are you doing? I'm doing the five years. Okay, good. Have you done the first one? Yeah. That's enough to prove that it's many to one. You got two yeah. roots, did yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, so what were the two roots? Yeah, so using those two values of x give you the same value of f of x. Um, what did you say? Uh, x plus 1 and x plus 2, was it? Or did you factorize or what did you do? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So your solutions are minus 1 and minus... No, one plus 2 and one minus 2. Oh, root 2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got... Okay, root 2... Root 2? I wasn't expecting a root. How did you solve it? What method? Okay. The formula? I wasn't expecting a root. Is it possible that you use the b squared minus minus b plus minus formula? Yeah, it's minus 4. Yeah, yeah, it's minus 4. So it's 4 plus a minus square root of minus 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 2 all the way to times 2. <laughs> That's a lot of twos to keep track of. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. 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 That's of 1 plus root 2 equals 0, because it's a root, and that 1 minus root 2 equals 0, so therefore it's many to 1, which means uh, no inverse. Because I can ask you, uh, is it the first word? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, good.